Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today we're going to be painting with dot charts. I was excited to hear that Hero Arts and Daniel Smith were partnering for one of the monthly Hero Arts kits. And this is what the kit contains. And I didn't get the dies with my set, but I'll show you the rest of what I've got. And this is available for April 2016 only, so get them while they're available. As soon as they're out, they're out. But in the kit, you get a bunch of different wonderful things. You get a stamp set, of course, because Hero Arts makes rockin' stamps. A flower, a bunch of buds, there's some leaves, some greens, and then three really nice sentiments, a thinking of you, a thank you, and a just a really nice wishing you the most beautiful day, which is perfect for flowers, right? And I've got two packs of pearls, little jemmies. Then they give you a bunch of card bases. I'm not going to use these because my painting ended up coming out more on the peachy orange side rather than the purple side, so I used one of um, their sunshine card bases. But I'll talk about the paper in a moment. I want to talk for a moment about the watercolor palette and the brush. This is a water brush. If you haven't used one before, you just put water in it. This is one where you just stick it under the sink. So let me go fill that sucker up and be right back. And look how fast I am. I ran all the way to the bathroom and filled that up. And you break break up the surface of the brush. Often they have a little bit of something on them. So just bend it a little bit and then squeeze the brush and water comes out. Now, generally I like a regular brush because I get more control over it, but I'm going to use the water brush just because I can. And all you do with these dots, they are dots of paint. You pick up the, the color with the brush and paint it on your paper. I just got a little piece of scratch paper to show you how. And then I wipe it off on my hand or on a paper towel or whatever so that you aren't contaminating from one dot into the next dot because you don't have much paint here and it would be easy to contaminate them if you're not careful. Now I've taken my tube paints and done a large swatch chart because I want you to be able to see it. I would recommend doing a small one like those little little dots that I did rather than a giant chart because you'll use up all your paint using the giant chart. Here is the paper that's included in the kit. This is letterpress paper. It's not watercolor paper. It's like a heavy, heavy cardstock. I've used it for watercoloring before and before I knew a whole lot about watercolor paper and it worked fine. So I'm going to go ahead and use it today. The letterpress paper just has an interesting surface to it. It doesn't pill too badly as long as you don't scrub at it. So I'm going to show you how to do that so you're not like working up the surface too heavily. I'm using my Misty to do my stamping. And one of the reasons I like the Misty is because I'm a terrible stamper. I tend to get things uneven and when I use the Misty, I can re-stamp. So you put your, your image or your stamp down in place and you can see there's just an area on the right that I didn't quite get. So I can re-stamp it real easily. Boom, done. And then I can move it around. I can change the location of the stamp and the paper and everything and stamp another flower and then stamp all of my, my little pieces in there. And the, the Misty just makes my life easier. This is the regular sized one. I do have a video coming soon with the mini, so you'll be able to see the two in comparison. So this is the palette that I've made, that, that I made larger, and I wanna use yellows underneath and then some of the pinks on top. And looking at these two yellows, there's the Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue and the Quinacridone Gold. And I'm looking at these two little circles. The quinacridone gold has an empty circle and the cadmium yellow has a half a circle, which means it's partially opaque. So I was originally going to try to do the pink first and then do the, the yellow on top, but since I want to use the brighter yellow, I decided to do that first. That's one of the reasons why the Daniel Smith paints are pretty fabulous because you get these numbers with them and you know how transparent or opaque it is. I could have ended up painting the pink first and been really surprised when it covered up part of that pinky color. Now, when they say opaque or partially opaque or semi-transparent, semi-opaque, they don't mean like acrylics. It's a watercolor type of, of opacity. It just means you're not going to get as much color showing through below. But when I do the pink on top, I'm going to get plenty of that yellow underneath. And you know me in yellow. I like to have yellow on everything. So I'm just throwing the, the yellow paint across this. I, I'm squeezing the brush so that water comes out and I get plenty of water in there. And then just kind of moving the color around. I'm using puddles of paint that maybe got too thick in one area. 
and pulling it around to fill in the rest of the flower. This is really easy. If you want to leave your flower just like this, totally fine. You don't even have to do the second layer that I'm going to be doing with the shading on it, but I'll show it to you because it's really pretty. The paint is still wet here, so I'm going to go wet in wet with my quinacridone pink. And I just have paint on the tip of the brush, just on the very, very tip where I touched it to that little dot, which means it's going to put color out on the tip, and I'm going to get that somewhat hard edge. The paint is not soppy wet. If your paint is puddly, then you'll end up with it bleeding all over the place. But this is just kind of damp. And then I'm letting the, the brush, which is putting out water, have that soft edge in the side that's toward my hand so that you get the hard edge on one side and the soft edge on the other. And I'm going to do that underneath each one of the places where the petals curl. You can see in the drawing there's these little curls on, on the ends of a bunch of them. And then on others, I'm just trying to knock back the petal that's behind by putting a little color into it. I'm letting the watercolor vary in how heavy it gets. So sometimes it's really heavy, sometimes less. And watercolor will soften over time as it dries. So I'll be going back in at the end to add some really strong contrast in a few spots. But for now, I'm just trying to get the really soft watercolory shapes of each one of those petals kind of established so that I, I at least have a base down there for these. I'm not going to show you both of these flowers because they are the identical flower, but we're just going to look at it on this one so we can get an idea of how to paint a flower. Now if you're using other watercolors to do this kind of a flower, you may need to look at the opacity and you may need to test it out for yourself because most companies don't even tell you what those opacity ratings are. So I'll just put that out there for you because if you end up painting this pink on top and you wanted it to be this kind of a soft see-through pink, you may not have that with all of your other paints. And while I'm also <laughs> chit-chatting while you're watching me paint, the paints, each one of these tubes, is available as add-ons in with the kit this month at Hero Arts. And Add-ons meaning, you know, they're going to cost you more than the kit. The kit is, I think, $29.99. I'll put it on the screen if I find out that's different. I'm pretty sure it's $29.99. The paints vary by which paint it is. So each one will cost a different amount because it depends on how much the, the pigment costs and all that sort of thing. But you can check all that out on the Hero Arts site. There's also another stamp set and, you know, more, more stuff that you can get as add-ons that will go with a great spring kit, so some Mother's Day type stuff, if you're interested in that as well. But you can get quite a bit of painting done just from these dot sheets, and it's a great way to try out different colors. You can also get dot sheets of the entire Daniel Smith collection and just buy the dot sheet itself. I'll have links for you on my blog and down below in the description for that as well. If you just want to try out colors and see what colors you want, what, what you might like, now to clean off the brush in between colors, just scribble it onto a piece of scratch paper. You can see the discoloration on the end of my brush is not making any difference. I'm still getting clear water, so don't worry if your brush gets a little bit on the funky side. Now I had a little issue here. I'm, I'm speeding this up just because this is going to take a little while if we, if we keep going at that regular speed. But when I started doing the leaves, I was just happily painting along and everything was all great and I was you know, thinking about, okay, which colors am I going to put in with this? And then the phone rang. And usually I'll just stop the video and start answering the phone and seeing what's going on. Well, it was an 800 number and it was my bank lady and she was calling about my refi and she was reading disclaimers. <laughs> you know, like all that legal mumbo jumbo that they have to do, bless her heart. And I had to sit and listen to that and I thought, I really don't have time to pause the video. So I'm just going to paint while she talks because all I had to do was listen and say yes. So I was really not thinking about what I was doing. And I painted these really awkward looking stems on these two buds in the middle. And I was like, that looks really weird. And I'm like, well, maybe I can add a little bit of, you know, little leaf type things to them. And I'm mindlessly just starting to put leaves in the background now. I'm like, well, I could throw some leaves back there. Maybe that will hide the fact that I messed up on the stems and they just have an awkward curve to them. And then I thought, well, maybe I need more leaves then because, 
you know, I started putting some leaves in. You can't have just some and then not more. And, you know, I, the whole time I'm thinking, this is a wasted piece of paper now. I've wrecked it. I'm going to consider it practice as soon as the phone call is over. I'm just going to go ahead and restart and stamp all over again and start the piece over. But since I had the paint out and she was still talking, don't tell her. Nobody tell her. If any of you works for Bank of America, don't tell her that I was painting while she was talking. because She was being very sweet. And I just kept painting. I thought, well, let me just put more leaves and more of a bush behind it. And as I got further on, I realized I kind of liked it. So don't stop your watercolor. Even if you think I've really ruined this, let yourself practice and finish it. If it doesn't come out, you can still throw it away later. It's still just a piece of paper. But as I went, I kept making that little puddle of water down at the bottom so that I'd have some water to pick up. And then when I was picking up that really light green water, I could make this really soft kind of edge to it on that right side. And I was like, oh, I kind of like this. This actually looks pretty good. I was pretty excited. So yeah, a little lesson for you in uh, don't answer the phone while you're doing things, except when you do, maybe fun things will happen and you'll come out with something you like anyway. So next I wanted to add a little bit of dark to this. I wanted a little more contrast because I had some of those dark areas in the greens and I wanted to just get a little bit on the dark side somewhere else in the, the image. So I decided those centers and the little, I don't even know what those things are called, the little thingies inside the flower pistols and stamens or something isn't that the, I'm trying to remember back to my days of school and my brain is not working anyway I just started coloring those in with a little bit of that quinacridone violet and then I wanted to add a little bit of this fuchsia as well the fuchsia doesn't look at all like it looks in the solid paint it looks pinker in the solid paint and it's a little more I guess warmer I'm not sure if you'd call it warmer but I liked the color, I liked the contrast it was going to give it, and I went to some of the areas underneath some of the petals. I just wanted some of the petals to have a little more contrast in them. And so I looked for ones where the, there would be a petal on top of it, so I just put some shadows in the very deepest parts of those. And just a few. I didn't even have to do all of them, so don't obsess about it. Just do it until your eye is a little bit happy with what you're seeing there. And I actually did end up adding a little more yellow onto that flower at the bottom too because I got more yellow at the top and I think I, I was just too light in my coat of yellow on the, the flower at the bottom. Decided to add a little more of the fuchsia as well to the buds just to pull them together and make them fit with the coloration I'd done on the larger flowers. And uh, just going into the, the very deepest areas that and you can tell the deepest areas usually by the, the stamp drawing. Usually the artist will give you some sort of a clue. <laughs> so uh, this is also, by the way, going to be trimmed out more. So I'm not worried about the tape covering up some of the areas because I'm going to cut the panel down. Now I'm using a yellow card base, as I said earlier, from the Sunshine Collection because I, had, I didn't have enough purple on this. I thought I was going to put more purple in it, and I didn't. It ended up with more of the yellow and the pink. So there you have it. So I trimmed it down so that I would have a little tiny yellow border on the left and a much larger yellow border on the right. And I've got my phone tape under it. I put a lot of it when I use watercolor just because I want to make sure it stays really stable. So I put a bunch of it around different areas. And I've got my stamp runner and my sentiment I stamped with the same two inks. I'm not sure if I mentioned them. It's bubble gum and field greens that I stamped this in. All the supply links will be in the description down below, of course. And then I had my sentiment to be able to move it around and figure out where I want it. And did I want it down below? Did I want it up above? Um, I have it stamped on the same cream letterpress paper so it would match. And I decided as I was nudging it around to make sure that that top flower didn't peek through underneath at all. So there is my finished card, which came out so pretty. The gems that I put on, I added the large gem on the right hand side where the card is recessed a little bit so it didn't pop up and it won't go through the envelope when I mail it to somebody. So here's a couple more flower videos that I've done before. There's a white 
and a red in different mediums, and then a link to my watercolor flower series as well. This is number 12. I'm sure that I've been, done more than 12 watercolor flowers, but I've collected a bunch of them into a playlist here on YouTube. You can also subscribe if you'd like to get more videos from me. There's more information on my blog, and I will see you guys later. Take care. Have a great day.